Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Trey Rowe, and I am a MyTech rep out of Virginia. So uh, some of you all might know me. If uh, you don't know me, then very nice to meet you. Today, we are talking about preventive maintenance for our roof tracker system. As we all know, preventive maintenance is very important. It um, allows you to take more control over the downtime and reduce the chance that your machine will go down when, say, you're doing a rush order for one of your most important customers. So if you don't have a preventive maintenance program, we highly encourage you to look into it. If you do, great job, and uh, hopefully these tips will help you out. Before we get started, one of the things I wanna mention is that whenever you're working on our equipment, make sure that you're using all the, the right protective equipment for uh, safety glasses, uh, hearing protection, gloves, and also make sure that you are following all relevant guidelines and procedures in your safety program that your uh, location has. If you're not familiar with them, if you're watching this on a video format, go ahead and pause it now and talk to your safety administrator. If you don't know who your safety administrator is, then we encourage you to talk with your supervisor or even your plant manager and uh, find that person or find that safety program and get familiar with it. So moving on. So what we're going to do is we are going to start from the electrical system and we're going to work our way to the safety system and then eventually work into the mechanical system and talk about a few steps that you can use for preventive maintenance to uh, increase the reliability of your machine. Starting out with the power connection types. So you have one of two connection types with your machine. One is called a Festoon cable. And what that is, is it's a power cable and it's connected to a trolley and you'll see the power cable just kind of being looped around and uh, that connects to your machine and provides power that way. The other one is called a bus bar. And what that will be is a straight pole and it has these special shoes that connect to a track. And that's how the power connection is, uh, is accomplished there. With the Festoon cable, what you wanna do is check the cable for any amounts of wear if it looks uh, wrong or if there looks to be a little bit of wear, uh, shut down the power to the machine and contact our support team and ask uh, what steps that you need to, uh, to do next. For the bus bar, what I like to do, I'm a big fan of flashlights, is uh, if you don't have good lighting, get a really high powered flashlight and, and look up there and um, you're going to be checking the connection for the shoes. Um, make sure the shoes are excessively worn down. And also check the track as well and make sure that it is in good working condition and there's no breaks with that. If there are, again, contact support and ask about the next steps. Moving uh, to the electrical cabinet, there's uh, three main things that you're going to be checking there. The first is the disconnect switch. What you want to do with that is essentially make sure that it's functioning properly. Make sure that when you turn the disconnect switch, it turns the switch inside. When you open up the cabinet, look inside, make sure there's not any wear on that plastic part and make sure it's making a good connection there. You'll notice if it's not working properly. For the VFD, that's the next system. Uh, that one's pretty easy. Whenever it messes up, usually it throws a red light and it flashes an error message on that. So check for that, make sure that there hasn't been any errors going on and make sure that it's working properly. If there is a problem, again, contact our customer support and uh, we can help you uh, look into that. With the VFD and also the safety relay, what you're going to do is uh, do a quick visual inspection and make sure that the cords and the, uh, the cables are all properly seated and there's no loose or frayed cables with that. What you can do is if there does look to be a loose cable, shut down the power to the machine. Give it a light tug and uh, just see if it's loose. So you don't want to pull on it too hard, but you can do a light pull test um, just to check that connection. If it's loose, then that's something that needs to be addressed and uh, either cable needs to be replaced or um, the connection needs to be tightened. Moving on to the safety system. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at our scanners and light bars. Uh, you're going to need to check the windows for those and make sure that they are clean and uh, free of dust or dirt or, or any other obstruction that could be there. 
if uh, if they're cleaned improperly, then they can uh, cause problems. Um, what you want to do is whenever you're cleaning these, you want to use a lint-free cloth and either common glass or plastic cleaner. Under no circumstances, do not use thinner benzene or acetone on these. It can corrode the plastic and cause these things to, to go down. Something to watch out for these. I hate to mention it, but these things are generally very expensive. So you want to really make sure that the materials are on site. If you have some assembly crews that occasionally wipe this thing off, do yourself a favor and uh, make sure that there's a, a lint-free cloth and proper cleaning materials within reach. Hopefully we can encourage them to use uh, the proper cleaning materials because we all know that, I mean, when their production is rolling, they can't really take a lot of time to walk away from the machine. So having the materials on site uh, really encourages the proper behaviors with that. Going into the mechanical systems. So proper, tang uh, proper chain tension is very important. First, we're gonna check the motor drive chain. What you're gonna do is uh, it should have about an inch and a quarter of play back and forth. If it doesn't have the right amount of uh, tensioning, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna adjust that using the jack bolts underneath the motor. Again, double check it. And uh, if it is off, it can cause damage to the entire system so check it often the next system that we're going to check is the uh, drive wheel chain that one should only have about half an inch of play and if you need to adjust that then uh, there is a chain tension sprocket that you're able to use uh, for both that and the motor drive chain again double check this make sure that they're properly tensioned because if there's a loose chain it can cause damage to other parts of the machine cause it to start failing faster and can really cause problems down the road. So um, definitely check with uh, both these uh, systems. So the drive system wheels, sometimes these are hard to see. Again, always have a good flashlight available. What you're gonna do is uh, try and get the best uh, view you can of all the wheels on this system. You know, idler wheels, guide wheels, and pressure wheels. Uh, what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be checking these for just any obvious damage or you know, debris or anything else that would cause them to roll um, improperly. If it looks like it's a mess, then um, it's definitely a problem. I have run into some customers where they let it get pretty bad and eventually the entire wheel was disintegrating and so the machine was down for a while. And so you wanna catch that before the wheel falls apart and also before the wheel causes any problems with movement with the machine because that can cause again problems with other parts so definitely check those out as best as you can a few wheels that uh you definitely need to be paying attention to are the guide wheels so what you want to do is get the machine square make sure that there's no rocking back and forth again take a flashlight or try to look down and make sure that those guide wheels are about 1 16th inch away from the uh from the table too. 1 16th inch is about the thickness of a penny so when you're looking down those basically you want to make sure that see if you can slide a penny through and just barely get it through that gap if it looks too big or too little then uh you're going to need to adjust those to make sure that the table moves properly Adjusting the drum roller height. For this one, I would talk with your assembly crews and uh, really ask them how the table's been performing. This is a little bit more in depth, but you know, if you're doing your, your periodic preventive maintenance, then this is uh, just a good time to ask them, hey, um, is it pushing in the plate too much? Is it a little bit too little? If there's a problem, then definitely you're gonna need to adjust it. The uh, adjustment procedures can be found on page 58 of the manual. One thing to really remember is that you're going to want to adjust this in very small increments. If you overdo it and uh, try and go too fast, then you can damage the machine. Mike and uh, Tim uh, recommend that you do it only in small increments where if you just turn one face of the nut at a time, uh, that way you can make sure that you're, you're properly going about it. But definitely uh, look into page 58 of the manual. Lubrication, it is very important to use the right lubricant with these chains. Please, please, please do not use whatever is just laying around. I've seen that happen before and it just, it never goes well. 
for these uh, for the drive chain and motor chain, you're going to use SAE 30 uh, lubricant. If you don't have it available, then it's definitely worth a trip to the store. Go to the store, get the right lubricant, make sure you're doing it correctly the first time. Uh, the schedule for lubricating the chains, if you're running about one shift a day, then, um, then you'll need to lubricate it about once every month. If you're running two shifts a day, well, then you're going to need to do that about once every two weeks. So, you know, put a schedule out, make sure, put a reminder on your calendar and just make sure that you're lubricating it at the right intervals. The lubrication instructions can be found on page 54 of our maintenance manual. It might be good just to review those procedures before going ahead and just making sure that you're lubricating the chains properly. For lubricating the wheels, this is something that you're, um, if you're running one shift a day, you only really need to look at it about once a year. If you're running two shifts a day, then once every six months. Again, uh, if you're running an Outlook calendar, sometimes it helps just set yourself up with a reminder on that. Just, you know, set a certain time of the year where that's just, you know, it's what you do, maybe around inventory time. So what you're going to do is you're going to use number two lithium base grease. Again, if you don't have the right grease, then, I mean, please go to the local store, get the right grease, and make sure that you're using the right materials. You'll, you'll be thankful that you did later. There are wheel and uh, bearing lubrication points, and you'll use those to, you know, as I said, once every year, once every six months, uh, go ahead and just make sure that these are functioning properly. If you have any questions, um, you can always contact our technical assistance department at 1-800-523. 3380 or contact my machinery support at mii.com. Um, they are always uh, happy to help out with our machinery. And if there's something that needs a little bit more uh, attention or maybe a site visit, then that's a good way to start the process uh, and get that moving forward. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call us, and, uh, contact us, and we'll be happy to help.